Hello there. I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to the very first Funky Monkey at the Movies of 2018. And with me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, we've been to see the first Marvel release of the year, Black Panther. Now, as with Wonder Woman, I'll offer a disclaimer. Both my nameless producer and myself are white. However, this is a comic book movie, therefore we are able to discuss the comic books and the movie. With that said, let's get to the movie. And it was another corker in the Mighty Marvel tradition. Plenty of action, a genuinely affecting story. Straight off, I can say that it kind of put me in mind of Thor in the way of the dynastic elements of it, the getting to grips with the being a king part, though I feel that T'Challa lacks rather a lot of Thor's recklessness. I should certainly be looking forward to any kind of interaction that Thor and T'Challa might have in Avengers Infinity War. That might be interesting. Let me offer up a panther-related fact. Yeah. Did you know there's actually no such cat as a panther? They're, in fact, just leopards that have got hyperchromatic disorder or something, so they have more pigmentation. But if you look closely at them, you can actually see the leopard markings on them. And in the past, people gathered them up and, like, they've bred them more together, so there's more of them. But they are just basically just leopards. Well, after the rise of the Black Panther activist group, Marvel did briefly rename the character Black Leopard. Well, that would make more sense, actually, because by definition, panthers are black, because they're like a subgroup of leopards that are black. Yeah. So a black leopard would make more sense. I've kind of got a different take on the film. Uh-huh. I, kind of, I thought the story was kind of average, to be honest. It was just, here's a bad guy, he's stolen some vibranium, we're after him. Here's another bad guy, he's a long-lost king or long-lost relative, and he's come back to try and fight it. I kind of can see how uh, I can see how it made you think of Thor a bit because it's an evil relative comes back to threaten things in the same way that Loki did. But yeah. I didn't find this guy as compelling as Loki. He just came across as an angry, angry person who was just like bitter because his dad had got killed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can actually see that. I, I can actually agree with you there. I mean, it wasn't a film I was hugely looking forward to as a Marvel film, because the Black Panther character from the comic books I'd always found kind of a bit um, arrogant. And also he had that connection to Doctor Doom, which was, so I never really liked him that much. But I thought I'd give it a go. And I think some of the photography and shots and things were very uh, beautiful, but I just kind of found it a little bit embarrassing because you could sit there and play like African trope bingo it was like disky lip man, check clicky language, check spears, check and I mean they were there saying oh we've got these sonic powered spear weapons which are going to be amazing it just brought to mind this scene from an episode of Stargate SG-1 Colonel O'Neill's training some people to fight Jafar's Free um, Jafars? It could have been free Jafars or some free slave people. Right. But he had one of the Jafar staff weapons, which is just like a big stick with a laser beam on the end. Mm-hmm. And he's there going, this is the Jafar staff weapon. It's a weapon designed to terrorize. And he got um, someone to show it off. And then he pulls out one of the machine guns they've got. And he goes, this is the blah, 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 whatever machine gun. It's a weapon designed to kill. And then, like, he fires a few shots off, showing it's a more practical weapon. And I kind of thought, yeah, you know, these, like, super powerful staff um, spears might be able to stop a tank, but I'd probably take three guys with MP5s over them, because you could stand back and shoot while they're messing about with their spear. Or AR-17s. Well... MP5s are smaller and more um, more practical, I think, rather than a- AR. AR-17s, did you say? I thought they were yeah. a- AR-15s, aren't they? Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Well... That, they, they, like, they just seem to have taken this mishmash of African cultures and thrown them together. They're going, you know, this looks good. Let's put that in, and let's put that in, and let's put that in. 
made up this kind of mishmashy type of stuff. Suri was okay. He's sister. She was pretty good. And yeah. He was you okay. got to love a good tech nerd. Yeah. I mean, Chadwick Boseman was okay. He did come across kind of the, the stiff kind of character that I expected Black well, Panther to be. As I understand it, in the comics, Black Panther is, well, T'Challa has always been rather this haughty, aloof character as befits a king. Yeah, he did come across this haughty and aloof in the comic books, I think. He's one of the things that put me off him. You know, uh, I found that hard to uh, gel with in a hero. Except, I do remember at one point, there was a version of Black Panther that had come back from the future that was much jokier and more jovial. Uh, the uh, so-called Happy Pants. Right. I like Claw. He was like bonkers. Yes. Claw. Spoiler alert, it was a shame he got killed. I would have liked to have seen him come back again. Yeah, well... And I like King Monkey Dude Man. From Mbaku. The, yeah, from the... The Man Day. Ape. That was one of the gripes that I had. They teased it when they were going to take the route to Mbaku. I was gonna, I was thinking yeah, that they were going to do it. They were going to give it to him. Dude, he was going to eat it, eat it. He was going to become Man Ape. But it didn't happen. No. They got teased these things and have them ready to come forward for the next film. Or films after that, or whatever. <laughs> But yeah, he was quite good as well. So, I liked him. How about the music? Did you like the music? I didn't like the music, really. Parts mm. of it were okay, but then they kept having that annoying wood thing in there to try and make an authentic sound, which I just thought was, like, really forced and a bit annoying. It just seemed a bit off-key. Kind of thing, they just keep through throwing it in there. Well, it was kind of funny how they blew up the cars and things during the um, the car chase. I mean, that was a good part. That was a good scene. Yeah. Generally, I mean, generally that's... Some, some good action scenes in it, I thought. Yeah, well, it's not something, again, that you expect from a Marvel movie. To have this James Bond-like casino moment. Yeah. Which, of course, spoiler alert, is where this movie Stanley cameo comes in. Yeah. Cherish him, folks. We might not get many more. It's true. At least he's out of hospital now. Yeah. Deadpool 2's coming out soon, so he's probably already, already done a cameo for that. And he's probably already done a cameo for the Avengers. Oh, he's definitely done his cameo for Infinity War. What else have we got coming out this year? I think there's another X-Men, isn't there? And they're going to try and touch on the Dark Phoenix saga, I think. Uh, I don't know when X-Men Dark Phoenix is coming out, or if it's coming out, but looking forward to it. Oh, but I do know what is coming out. Uh-huh. Ant-Man and the Wasp. That I am looking forward to. And I am expecting more Giant Man action. Yeah, yeah, that will probably be good. Yeah, I kind of thought they didn't do him enough with T'Challa after he got defeated. I mean, that was the hero fall from grace and should have been like the redemption moment because it just followed the other characters around for a bit. Well, I to see what happened to him and I would have liked to have seen more interaction with this magic hidden panther god that they worshipped. I think, I think if they'd done something a bit more if he, during his second spiritual visit after they gave him the herb when he was in the ice, if maybe he'd had some interaction with Bass, then I think that would have tied it together a bit more and there should have been a bit more him building himself back up or something, maybe. Well, sadly that wasn't the story. The main story was that uh, King Tachaka had made an error in judgment in leaving his nephew behind and not taking him to Wakanda to try and raise him. Perhaps it would have been more of a Thor and Loki relationship if Killmonger had been raised in Wakanda alongside his cousin. Killmonger is almost as bad a name as Taserface, isn't it, really? Well, it worked in the 60s. And with all them bumpy scars on his body, I don't know why, but it just made me think of Aquaman. He just gave him an Aquaman vibe to me. I don't mm. know. I mean, there was there was that one scene in the film as well, where 
uh, Umbutu or whatever. Mbaku. Mbaku, you said, well, well, the, the challenge was there, and he's all like, oh, hail Hanuman or something. And then you looked at me and went, isn't he Hindi- Indian? And then I looked at you and went, isn't Bast Egyptian? Yeah. And I kind of checked, and Bast is an Egyptian goddess. Well, uh, Egypt is in North Africa. Yeah, but it's a very different kind of African to the uh, the other parts of Africa, kind mm. of. And you're right, Hanuman is from Hindu mythology, so mm-hmm. that was a bit confused, mm-hmm. a bit messed up, I thought. Well, we know at least the spirit animals of three of the five tribes. you got your panther tribe, uh-huh. your rhino tribe... And the Jabari, the monkey tribe. Yeah, I don't know what I thought about those crazy Vibranian war rhino things. Uh, I don't know what I think of the whole idea of Vibranium anyway. It's kind of like, they may almost made it out like it's magic. Like, it can work every technology in the world kind of thing. And it's just like, ooh, Vibranium, we can do everything we want with it. Well, Cap's shield is made of it. It is. And that's kind of like, just shows it's got very unique vibrational properties that absorb any kind of blows and things and make it indestructible. Is that the stuff Adam and, uh, no, that's Adam and I'm thinking of vibranium, the other stuff, isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of indestructible metals around. There are in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. And with uh, Disney having bought Fox, we might just see more of them. Yeah. Adamantium and Vibranium together at last, kind of thing. Yeah. And of course, we got the reveal of what happened to Bucky. Yeah. Finally free of... They just woke him up and he's free of the mind brain control Mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving him a new arm. Well, that was kind of foreshadowed anyway, because they went, oh, another broken white boy to fix. Yeah, well... Yeah, that was another thing that kind of irritated me a little bit. I don't want to make it political, but the politics of it didn't really make sense, or at least Killmonger's politics didn't really make sense, because at one point it was all like, oh, we're going to send these weapons out to the oppressed people so they won't be oppressed. And then ten seconds later he's going, and the sun will never set on the Wakandan Empire. So one second he's trying to free oppressed people, and the next second he's trying to build a world-conquering empire. A slave begins by demanding justice and ends by wanting to wear a crown. Yeah, exactly. This goes to show, doesn't it? It just didn't really make a lot of sense. Oh, he didn't know. think it through. It just is another thing that just added to his... He was just an angry, angry man. Yeah. With daddy issues, because his daddy was dead. Well, you know, some people have a flair for creating good villains. Other people really don't. Well, I think that's been some of the problem with Marvel films, is they try and tell a story that doesn't need a villain, but then they realise it's also a superhero thing, so they need to have a villain fight at the end. So a lot of the time the villains feel tacked on. I mean, like, Obadiah Stain in the first Iron Man film was quite good. It's kind of like a malevolent... Um, abuse of capitalism type of villain in the background but then they just put him in the suit at the end to have a big fight and you know some of the other villains well none of them have really made an impact apart from uh, Loki Uh, you didn't like Ego the Living Planet? no he wasn't that great he was okay I suppose And due to user error, this is where the recording stopped. But I can give you the scores for this movie. Producer Man gave it 6 out of 10, citing it to be overhyped. I was a little kinder, giving it 7 out of 10, and recommending another mighty Marvel movie for true believers everywhere. So, for my nameless producer, this has been Funky Monkey. Social media and Patreon links are in the description. Don't forget to LSS. That's like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for extra notifications. But for now, thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the movies.